So I'm going to cook a beautiful lamb roast, lamb uros, on the rotisserie on Ozpeg for you today. So I thought I'd just show you how I'm actually going to do it. A uh, big shout out to Jason from Windenvale Shopping Centre at King of Kings Butchery. He's done the most magnificent pieces of lamb that you'll see afterwards and marinated them in our choice, which was the lamb uros. Um, He's fantastic in the way that any of the meats that you go into, he's got a huge selection of rubs and marinades and you can basically pick any from anyone and he'll um, marinate them for you all as part of the cost. He'll also cut you your pieces of meat the way that you want to eat them. In the pack that we bought, we were supposed to get a lamb roast and I mentioned to him that I would like to actually cook it up on a rotisserie and he's cut them into uh, beautiful pieces that I can slide onto the rotisserie really easily, which you'll see after as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So just to show you that um, the attachments for the rotisserie that you can get, so you've got part of the rotisserie system here that just slips into the two holes on one side you've got another section on the other side that holds your rotisserie stick and when you feed it on your meat and you lock it into place with your clamps typical rotisserie style then you'll simply feed it in and it sits there and it'll do its job beautifully for you over the next few hours so what I also like to do, you can cook your rotisserie meats on the fire straight from the pig itself, but I like to have a little bit more of a controlled burn when I'm cooking, especially meat because it'll drop down and if it's on direct flame it can often flare up. You can get your deflector um, plates and things like that to help stop it as well, uh, which are these ones, which are great, perfectly fine, but I like to, where I can, use beads, heat beads. So another extra that you can buy for the pig is this heat bead basket. I've just loaded it up with some beads and it simply just sits in the top there. So in a minute, I'll get a fire started underneath here, get the beads heated up. I'll come back to you when I'm feeding the meat on to show you how to do that. And then we'll take it from there and see how it all goes. So now that we have our coal bed nice and hot, and you can see, uh, you can tell as soon as the briquettes turn white, um, then you know that your coals are hot enough and ready to put your meat on. So we're just gonna flip you around here. I have my helper, Chelsea, who is going to just hold the plate while I can feed the meat on. So roughly what you need to do is you'll need to put your first spikes on here to hold the meat and you need to just really roughly work out where the meat's gonna lie so I want it up here so feed the first one on dogs are patiently waiting thinking they're getting a big plate of meat that's just not gonna happen uh, Oof, that's nice and hot. I'm going to want it right at the end there. Okay. So then you just tighten that off. Now, this is the one and a half kilos of lamb roast that Jason at King of Kings Butchery has cut into pieces for me to be able to put on the rotisserie. And he's put that in the lamb uros rub as well. I'm just going to open it out. Ah, 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 out. <laughs> no dog. No. So he's put them into nice pieces like that. So then you just feed them on. Yes, it is seasoned. That's nice. That's what Jason at the butchers has done for us. 
No. Well, that's a big piece. Ew. It's I'm going to double that over. No. <laughs> I can see I'm going to lose this. She's just going to jump up and steal that any minute. Who? Which one? Chloe. Oh, yeah, she will. <laughs> You're so fat. Ah, ah, ah. No, stop being fat. Just keep feeding that on. I don't like how moist it is. <sighs> Ew, you fun seasoning. Oh, that's <laughs> alright. Don't eat it up. Just, just my hair. A little bit of hair flavour. Yum. It, it gives it more flavouring. It'll taste like shampoo. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Couple more pieces. No. You fat dog. And one more piece. Just make sure that bag doesn't fly away, pal. Do you win? Can I give them that? No. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Pam. All right. So then we've got all those pieces on that end. We just use a spike on the other side. Center it slightly, give it a good squish so that it's all gonna rotate properly. Like so, and then just pop it into its little house. That should cook. Mm. But what I might do is I might just move that down a little bit, a little bit off centre for my liking. If I'm going to be able to do it now that I've put okay. everything on. Okay. Oh, it helps if I'm doing the right one. There, and I'll just retighten everything. Oh, this smells amazing already. It's not even cooking. Oh, that's better. All right, and then just turn on the rotisserie and keep the fire stoked. So that it keeps it burning nicely underneath, and that's it. That I'll check in about now and a half's time. It will probably be cooked enough by then, but maybe two hours. We'll see. But I will show you the end result when we're done. So I thought I would just show you where we're at with the cooking process at the moment. I ended up putting the uh, deflector on the top as you can see because even with the um, charcoal in the um, holder because the lamb does drop you can see it spitting and it was flaming up and I didn't want the lamb to burn so I put the deflector on just to stop that and as you can see it works an absolute treat. The fat still drops down, but there's no flames coming up and burning the meat prematurely, which is really good. So this has probably got maybe about another half hour cooking time. If you wanted to, you could slice off the outer edges just to cook more into the center. Um, but uh, we like it sort of a bit crusty on the outside, so we'll keep it going and it should be absolutely delicious we've already had a little bit of a sneaky test of some of the hangers that you get and it is magnificent so we look forward to putting this on our plate and i will show you a picture of the end result